Thank you, Mr. Brownstone. I'd like to call to order the regular meeting, July 26th meeting, the Middletown Board of Education. Mrs. Blumenau, could you please lead us in a flag salute and please remain standing for a moment of silence. Thank you. The moment of silence this evening is for the young man who lost his life uh, in a auto accident, a SS Surge student, uh, John Guerrero. He was a star athlete and a, uh, a scholar. Uh, I didn't know him, of course, but I just want to uh, uh, relate what uh, a couple members of the staff said about uh, John. Uh, Bill, Bill Steele, the soccer and assistant basketball coach, stated, he was a tremendous kid, great student, even better person. Superintendent Jan Jerling Jer said, he was a superior student in all respects. He was very highly regarded as a student and an athlete. You know, we face some of these schools on the, quote, the friendly field of strife, but when something happens like this, we're all as one. Uh, when something occurs to one of our students or other students in the community, the enlarged community, uh, we feel it also. So please remember John Guerrero in your thoughts and prayers. Thank you so much. <laughs> Mrs. Tobiasen, could you read the, could you go over the mission of the Enlarged City School District? The mission of the Enlarged City School District of Middletown. We strive to provide physically sound educational opportunities in a safe environment that continuously support our diverse student population. We will enable all students to graduate, to reach their full potential, to become lifelong learners, and to be competitive, productive members of society. Thank you very much, Mrs. Tobiasen. Mrs. Clark, could you call the roll? Mrs. Blumenau? Here. Mr. Vicenza? Here. Mr. Gomez? Here. Here. Mr. Pierre. Here. Mr. Bison. Here. Pastor Williams. Here. Mrs. Sutton. Here. We're all here today. Yes, thank you. We all here, and that's good, as uh, Bishop Williams said. Uh, may I have a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Approval of the minutes. So moved. Let's see. If any objection to approving the reorganization minutes of July 5th, the regular minutes of July 5th, the special meeting of July 16th, May I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Any discussion on this? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Now we come to approval of personnel. And we pulled the administrators out because we're, we're always asked to do this. Approval person, uh, personnel memorandum 2A administrative, a motion to approve. So moved. Any discussion on this? And if you, you notice on the personnel memorandum, the administrative uh, personnel memorandum, 
don't be concerned. We have the resignation of Richard Del Morrow and uh, Amy Creedon and Suzanne Dis Driscoll. The reason we're doing this, of course, is they're moving into new positions. So they're not going any place, so uh, thankfully. And now we can go on, because I know I was going to be asked about this, if not now, uh, later on. So let's see, we have a motion to approve. We had discussion on this. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. And for the new people here, uh, uh, I just want to say that we have all this background material uh, at least a week before the meeting. So we ask questions and so on. So we're not rubber stamping anything. Questions have been asked and answers have been given. All right, let's go on to continue on here. No objection, uh, we'll prove personal memorandum to be instructional and, and, and uh, non-instructional. Motion to approve? So moved. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Now we have the introduction of personnel, which is always a very pleasant part of our meeting. Thank you, Mr. Perino. Indeed, it is a very exciting night tonight, especially to look out and see um, so many faces, um, all of which I had the pleasure of participating in um, the interview process with. So it's nice to look out and see so many people that are so enthusiastic about becoming part of um, the MIDI team. So we will kick off the introductions of staff this evening with the high school, who probably has the largest contingency of new staff this evening, um, Mr. Whitaker, Mr. Donahue, and Ms. Kuntz. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Uh, President Perino, Vice President Williams, Ms. Creed and Mr. Tuttle, members of the board. It is really a great honor that I have the opportunity with Mr. Donahue and Ms. Coons to introduce members of the new high school team. So the first member I'm going to, I'm not a big microphone person, the first person I'm going to speak about is Mr. Hipsman. So Eric, why don't you come up? Most of you know Mr. Hipsman. He has been a lead replacement guidance counselor here in the district. He has been coaching track and field for the last 15 years. He makes a mean hamburger during our football games. And, and really more importantly, he, he has a great rapport with the students. He works hard with the students. He knows the students. As a guidance counselor within the high school, he's going to do great work in, a, in, a, in making our students be successful within the classroom. And uh, he'll be joining you know, the high school team very soon. So Eric, would you mind sharing a few words? Hey, this is, uh, I think, my third or fourth time uh, being introduced here. I did an internship here. I did a leave replacement here. And, and now I'm coming back as a full-time guidance counselor. And I'm thrilled about it. Um, I thank you for the opportunity to in in increase my roles here uh, other than just coaching. So thank you very much. And I look forward to getting started. Thank you. Um, Ms. Grieco, come forward. I'd like to introduce you to Ms. Grieco. Ms. Grieco is joining Middletown High School as a chemistry teacher. She is a Pine Bush native who is looking forward to coming home to the Hudson Valley after completing graduate school up in Binghamton. Ms. Grieco has experience teaching at the collegiate level in Pennsylvania, and we are very excited that she is joining our team here in Middletown. I'm not going to touch it, but 
Um, I'm just, I'm very excited to be in a school district that places a large emphasis on the STEM fields and one in which the science education program is up and coming and turning science education into what it should be. So thank you for the opportunity. I'm excited to start working. Thank you. Next, I'd like to introduce you to Samantha McGregor. Ms. McGregor is a recent graduate of Mount St. Mary College, where she was a member of the International Honor Society in History and an officer of the International Honor Society in Education. Additionally, she was captain of the school swim team. While at Mount St. Mary College, Ms. Ms. McGregor was awarded a grant to create and execute a humanities-based program for San Miguel Academy that culmin culminated in an impressive comparison of Newburgh then and now, with an emphasis on Washington's headquarters. Ms. McGregor is passionate about education and is eager to become involved in, with the Middletown school community. Um, I just want to thank everyone for giving me this opportunity to finally start my teaching career. Ever since I was in seventh grade in my social studies class, I've dreamed about this school year and getting a, a teaching job. So I'm very, very excited for September. Welcome. All right, good evening, uh, Mr. Perino, Pastor Williams, uh, Ms. Creed and Mr. Tuttle, members of the board, members of the Middletown community. I have the pleasure of being here to introduce several candidates. Um, the first up is, if she come on up. Uh, Ms. Brittany Tresh. Uh, Ms. Tresh is a graduate of Middletown High School. Uh, following high school, she pursued her studies at Ock and then again at New Paltz. Um, following her studies, she took leave replacements at Middletown High School in Johannesburg Catholic, um, teaching a variety of, of social studies classes. She also taught technology. Um, she actually has ex a pretty extensive experience with using technology to support learning and is very excited about the opportunity and the resources Middletown offers in that field. Um, and so much so, she's actually pursuing a master's in instructional uh, technology or educational technology, yes. Um, she is passionate, and I underline passionate, about working with Middletown students um, and excited again about the opportunities and resources offered by the Middletown City School District. So. Um, Mr. Perino, Mr. Williams, Mrs. Creighton, and Mr. Tuttle, I'm, I'm so thankful for this opportunity to teach in a district that means so much to me. Um, I actually feel like I'm home, and I am so excited to start my career here at Middletown. Uh, just uh, can you hold up a minute, uh, Bill? Um, Paul, can you put that up on the screen? It's up on the screen. Right there. Many years ago, I don't know if Mark remembers this or not, that we did a segment of, uh, with Brittany uh, uh, at the Orange County Speedway because one of, another one of her passions is racing uh, cars, racing automobiles. So uh, uh, we did a, uh, she got the car around the track and I, I think one of us went, went with her, which was a, a quite the ride. But uh, we welcome you back to Middletown. Very, very good. And I know your uh, mom and dad are very pleased and your grandmother. OK. Good. So good luck. Uh, good luck to everybody. But good luck, Brittany. And uh, thank you, Bill, for Absolutely. enduring here. Absolutely. Go ahead. <laughs> OK. Um, our next. Uh, introduction, come on, uh, is Miss Elizabeth Schlisser. Schlisser, I'm so sorry. I will get it right, I promise that. It's my goal for the summer. Uh, she comes to us as a recent graduate from Marist College. Um, and while at Marist, uh, she distinguished herself as a talented future educator, so much so she was nominated actually for Intern of the Year uh, for the work that she did in that capacity, both as a student teacher, as a student. Um, you know, everybody I spoke to on her behalf spoke very highly of her as both, you know, not only her potential, but what she did in the time she was there in, in leave replacements over at FDR. Um, basically, everywhere she went, uh, you know, everybody spoke about how, you know, hardworking she was, the great rapport that she established with students, um, and really just, just putting students first and truly believing that all students can learn. Um, she has also demonstrated a passion for teaching through a multicultural lens. Uh, she was actually taking a class this summer. Um, specific and relevant to that field, um, and expressed a strong desire to work with our growing ENL student population. So she is uh, 
quite, quite excited uh, and expressed so again, all of the opportunities and resources that Middletown offers and she just can't wait to get started. So, Ms. Schlusser. I've always said I waited my whole life to stand in front of a classroom full of students who couldn't pronounce my last name. So I'm very excited to start that opportunity in September. <laughs> uh, usually students call me Miss S. Um, but I'm, as Mr. Donahue said, I just graduated from college. I was working in Hyde Park, so I'm very excited to come down to a district such as this with a diverse student population. I'm working on my master's in educational psychology with a focus on working with diverse student populations. So just as everyone else is articulating, I'm super excited to get started and looking forward to the rest of the day. So last but certainly not least um, is Miss Kate Chief. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Sheedy is actually also a former student, um, class of 2001, if I remember. 2000, sorry. Um, and since that time, she's actually, uh, she had 13 years of experience teaching in New York City um, as an English teacher. Uh, during the course of her career, she was recognized uh, by, as both a lead teacher and a model teacher, so two distinct kind of recognitions. As a lead teacher, Ms. Sheedy had regular meetings with fellow department members to analyze data, discuss pedagogy, and as a model teacher, she hosted regular visits to her class by colleagues and worked with them to improve her instruction. She was, again, in, in all conversations I had on her behalf, um, recognized not only for her impact on the students in the classroom, but also going above and beyond. That was a common theme over and over again, organizing plays, organizing assemblies, organizing fashion shows, poetry slams, you name it. She did it, and she was definitely, um, and I can say, you know, a, a lot of the people I spoke to were, were you know, sad to see her leave, but we are very happy to, to have her here. So um, she's, again, more than excited to come back and work with Middletown students. So, Ms. Sheedy. Good evening. <laughs> uh, as Bill stated, I graduated from Middletown High School in 2000, and some of my fondest memories are at Middletown High School. Uh, my husband and I recently just moved back to Middletown from the city, and we're thrilled to be here, and I'm really thrilled for the opportunity, and I thank you very much for the opportunity to teach in Middletown, and I'm really looking forward to starting in September. Thank you. Bill, I have to say something in, in this regard, too. Because we have with us this evening, Mr. and Mrs. Buckeye, mom and dad of Kate. And uh, Tom Buckeye was uh, a very long and illustrious career in Middletown. He started as an English teacher. Then he, be then he became assistant principal at A.J. Viraldi. And then when the buildings moved, he moved to Twin Towers and was uh, assistant principal and then became principal. And Tom and A.J. Virality, we had how many students? 1,500 in a building that was one quarter the size of the high school today. And we didn't have, we did not have uh, monitors. Uh, we did not have any security people. We did it all ourselves, right, Tom? <laughs> and with Tom uh, uh, this evening is his beautiful wife, Renee. And Renee has 28 years in the Middletown School District as an English teacher, again, at A.J. Viraldi and Twin Towers Middle School. And I, I might add, although Tom was in charge of discipline for many, many years, student behavior, mm -hmm. the students we loved remember. him. The students <laughs> loved him. We remember. He could be tough, <laughs> but they didn't mind that. And we kind of used a little, a few different methods <laughs> in those days. But uh, at any rate, welcome, Kay, and you're carrying on a very fine tradition, Middletown. Thank you. Dwayne, go ahead. All right, last but not least, Ms. Val Valerie Bianchi. She will be coming to us after, serve, after teaching four years at Sacred Heart in Monroe. The last two years she's been in Poughkeepsie as an earth science teacher. And this year she'll be joining us as an earth science teacher, strengthening our, our STEM program, our science department. And um, she's focused on the challenge. She's looking forward to it. 
She is from the College of St. Rose. So Ms. Bianchi, if you wouldn't mind saying a few words. Thank you so very much for the opportunity to work in your district. I am very excited and extremely enthusiastic to start off a wonderful school year here in September, and I'm looking forward to a great and wonderful future here where I'm able to share my knowledge and love for earth science and share that with the population here. Um, like he spoke, I did teach in Poughkeepsie, so I am um, very familiar with the diverse population, so I'm very excited to share my knowledge of science here with your students in Middletown. Thank you so much. Kevin, did you want to get a photo of all the new staff for the... I can do it individually, but Why don't you get a, a photo of the high school staff and Tom and Renee, come on up here. And we're going to get you into photos. Come on. I'll tell you, I'll get up if you get up. Come on. John, come on. Anybody wants, any board member wants to get into photos? John, come John on. John likes the photo ops. There you go. Okay. As we continue with our introductions, I'm going to introduce Mr. Gordon Dean, principal at Twin Towers Middle School. applause. Thank you very much. Why? Thank you, uh, Mrs. Creed and President Prino, members of the board, Middletown School community. Uh, my pleasure to introduce to you this evening the two newest members of the faculty of Twin Towers Middle School. Come on, come on, come on. Uh, first, we have uh, Victoria Valentino. Uh, Ms. Valentino is a graduate of Marist College. She's got her best buddy uh, right here <laughs> uh, supporting each other this evening. Um, and she'll be joining our uh, faculty as a seventh and eighth grade uh, social studies teacher. Uh, she had very successful student teaching experiences uh, in Hyde Park uh, and over the, in the Wappingers uh, districts. And uh, we're very excited to have her come to the Twin Towers. Okay, so hi, um, thank you so much for everyone who helped me get here. Um, after four years of being in the Hudson Valley at Marist, I'm finally excited to call it my home. And I admire and respect all the work that is done in this district. And I'm so excited to become a part of the magic that is the Middletown School District. So thank you so much. I'm so excited to see these halls filled with students in September so I can stop talking about it to my parents. So um, thank you so much for the opportunity and I really appreciate it. And this is uh, Ms. Fiona Ward. And Fiona graduated uh, from Scranton University and then uh, New York University with her master's degree. Uh, she had really interesting, uh, successful student teaching experiences in Brooklyn uh, and over at Beacon High School. And she did so well in her student teaching experience at Beacon that they hired her uh, to finish out the year uh, as a leave replacement teacher. 
and she carries two certifications, uh, both Spanish and TESOL. Uh, so she'll be teaching three ENL classes uh, for us and two Spanish classes, uh, very unique Spanish classes, in that these are the students of the dual language program. They exit the program in sixth grade, uh, and so they start taking Spanish uh, in, in the seventh grade. So welcome, Fiona. Uh, thank you, Mr. Dean. Um, uh, I would like to thank everyone uh, for uh, giving me this opportunity to start my teaching career here at, at Twin Towers Middle School come September. I'm really excited that I have the opportunity to use both my certifications in both ENL and Spanish. And um, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. Welcome. Okay, we're going to move down to the elementary level now with Mrs. Kathy Jensen from William Carter Elementary School. Reno, Vice President Williams, Mrs. Creedon, and respected board members. I'm thrilled tonight to have Catherine Sienna here with me. She's a graduate of St. Thomas Aquinas for her bachelor's and her master's. She is a Middletown student from kindergarten through ninth grade. She graduated from John S. Burke. Her family is uh, Middletown business owners for many years. I am thrilled to have her at Carter. When she was seeking a job, unfortunately, we were uh, facing budget cuts, and she was hired by PS70 in the Bronx, where she has been working and commuting for the past five years. She comes to us with very high recommendations and an extensive knowledge of math. Uh, she was even sought out by her administration to do coaching last year. She will be filling our fourth grade math vacancy, so I am thrilled to welcome her to Carter. Good evening, thank you very much for this opportunity. I am so excited to be back at Middletown where I started. Um, I cannot wait to start at Carter and work under Mrs. Jensen. And thank you again, I'm very excited for September. Okay, and bringing us home is Mrs. Short from Presidential Park Elementary School. Good evening, Mrs. Creed and uh, Mr. Perino, Mr. Williams, members of the board. It is with great pleasure that I introduce to you Mr. Rudy Regalado. Uh, Mr. Regalado originally thought that he wanted to pursue a career in criminal justice, but his passion for children uh, led him to this spot today, and we are thrilled to have him here working in the Middletown City Schools to be a role model for our youth, and I just want to say I am absolutely delighted to start an adventure with this young man. And I have to just say one thing, this is a great night, right? We introduce our staff and they get hit the ground running. And then four years later, we get to bring them back, hopefully, for tenure night. So this is like the first step in a great adventure for us, for him, and for all of these new people. So, Mr. Riccolato. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Wow, I, honestly, I'm still shocked that this is a real thing. Uh, I want to thank everyone uh, for getting me here and guiding me here. Uh, I'm very excited to start here in September. Uh, it's all I've been thinking about for the last few years, honestly. I've worked really hard to get here, and I can't wait to meet all of you and show you why you made the right choice and hired me, so thank you. <laughs>
The next, next item on the agenda, uh, under recognitions, announcements, and community reports, we have with us this evening a former head football coach, Mr. Richard Wolfslayer, started coaching in 1968, Dick? Head coach? Head coach in 1968? 67. 67. I got one year wrong. I'm sorry. Uh, 51 years ago. 51 years ago. Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen of the Board of Education, guests, uh, my goddaughter. <laughs> Welcome to Middletown. You'll never be sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I come here as a as a man that pushed for some of our good people that pushed a uh, a tennis that is a, a sport that is dear to my heart, other than football. My name is Dick Wolslayer. I came to Middletown sight unseen from the University of Colorado. Dr. Crow was the superintendent here. He knew the superintendent of the Boulder, Colorado system. I interviewed with him. I have the, the, uh, got the job because of their friendship. And I've never been sorry to be a teacher and coach in Middletown. There's some great kids, great people. And for the 33 years that I taught and coached, I, uh, I enjoyed every minute of it. I come here because I, I was a JV tennis coach for 22 years. We didn't have the best facilities to have our kids, but I took a ride in the back of the high school, and uh, there is a facility back there that matches our facility that's just down a ways. The stadium, I think, is one of the, the greatest in, in, the, in the state of New York, for sure, northeast, um, and for sure, Section 9. And uh, the last uh, two items Dr. Eastwood had on his list, he, he raised the roof, as he did quite often, raised the roof in the high school and put in eight brand-new tennis courts that are absolutely beautiful. When I came to Middletown in 62, I noticed that they rewarded a lot of their people who were very strong and influential um, administrators or teachers by naming buildings after them or fields after them or what have you. And the two people that I think were so influential with the sport of tennis in Middletown would be Mr. Anthony Gobbio and Mr. Anthony Delcado. Just a little bit about both of them. Mr. Gobbio I taught with when I first came to Middletown when I moved over to the high school and he was a born, born Middletowner. He, played football and basketball. He played football under John Bateman, who went from Middletown to, to Rutgers University as the head coach. Then he went to Syracuse with one of his favorite receivers, Mr. Anthony Capazella. They both came back. One is a social studies teacher. Tony Capazella came back as a phys ed teacher and a driver ed teacher, and he ended up as an administrator, assistant the principal in his later later years, uh, he passed on just just recently, and he, he was just a great man and a great great uh, Middletowner. Let's put it that way. Mr. Delcado was influenced by Mr. Gobio to come out for tennis. He and his brother were very close to winning several, uh, the uh, doubles doubles uh, state state uh, tournaments. But uh, Tony went to a, a small junior college and then to Michigan. And then he came to Middletown and coached both boys 
for 29 years plus. And then because they switched the uh, schedule around, he coached the girls for close to 20, 27, 28 eight years. He did have one, one singles player who won the state meet or state tournament. And uh, <laughs> that was before Tony uh, retired himself. He, he was a mainstay of our, of our um, Middletown sports camp. He, he was there when we first started it. And he was, I think, last year and this year is the first two years he didn't coach tennis at, the, at, at our sports camp. So between the two of them, <clears throat> Mr. Gobio had two state doubles winners. One was Mike Gerda Jr. and the other one, uh, we have Alex, Alex Smith, who's our uh, lawyer mouthpiece for the city, and, and Neil Novesky was his partner, and they won it uh, together. And uh, like I say, Tony also, he had the passion for tennis. He would play, uh, play whoever would play. His boys became very good tennis players, and, and he got many good tennis athletes out in Middletown to, uh, and we've always been a very great power as far as tennis is concerned. So I would like to propose that we have, and it doesn't have to be a, a big, big um, plaque like Ed Fowler, which was very well deserved. I was there for the, uh, for Ms. Dr. Eastwood's uh, speech on, on that plaque, that that was very well deserving. Ed was a great, great uh, teacher. He was a great administrator. He, and um, I just feel if we have a sign or something to have the the uh, Gobio Delcado Sports or Tennis Complex, people may take a little bit better care of the area in which. Uh, in which they, they participate or play or whatever. That would be my thought. It doesn't have to be really a big showy thing, just something to commemorate these two people because uh, they were a big force in, in the tennis program and sport in Middletown. Thank you. I told you I talked too much. Are there any questions uh, for <laughs> Mr. Wolfslayer? Any questions, please? Any questions or comments? Oh yeah, I was I was privileged to be be uh, approached by Tony Delcado to help him coach tennis. I was a JV tennis coach for 22 years here in Middletown before I retire. So I look slow, but I and I am. <laughs> <laughs> but I have got to commend you for giving the the again the the. Uh, quote, poor people of Middletown, a luxury type of facility. It is one of the finest I've ever seen in all of my travels around in, in um, short or long. The uh, facility is just outstanding, and it's a lot for the Middletown people and the students to be proud of because it's, uh, like I say, I've been here for, since 62, and... Uh, and we never, never had that that kind of facility to, for our kids to go and play tennis, or our our people, the people in the in the uh, community. So it's it's just a gorgeous facility. Thank you, Mr. Wolfsley. Okay. At this time, I'd like to I'd like to have a motion to amend the agenda to add a resolution to rename the tennis courts after Anthony uh, Gobio and Anthony Del Cotto. So moved. Any, Second. Any discussion on this? I, 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 want, to, I want to say this. Uh, I want to say this. Uh, both those gentlemen haven't been. A, I'm a lifelong um, a Middletown resident, um, 1982 graduate. You all know that. Uh, uh, both, both these gentlemen. Well, first of all, Mr. Will Slayer is is football legend. He's 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 a he's a legendary legendary coach. It's true that I am According to John I am the winningest football coach in Middletown history. 
Yes. <laughs> but it, it, when my hands started to swell, John Lee had me with that. However, <laughs> but you, but but you, you have made um, an indelible impression on, on many of us from my generation, and and I, I, I want you to know, I want you to know, many of us from the classes of the early '80s and the, and the, and the late '80s, uh, when we when we talk about. We talk about our experiences in school. There's never a time that your name does not come up. And so uh, you made a, a, a great impression on all of us, and I, and I, I want to thank you for that. Oh, yeah, you got that guy. He's, he's, he's good. He's, he's good. Absolutely. Thank you. I, I appreciate what I, what I wanted to say was was real quick, and I'll be real quick. Is that is that I appreciate you, uh, and and these two gentlemen that you have that the names that you have brought over my years in Middletown. These two outstanding gen gentlemen who have made a great impression in that area, especially in the area of tennis, but even outside of that, uh, Mr. Delcado uh, was very instrumental. Uh, at sports camp a couple years ago of even uh, getting my sons to, to like tennis. And I love the game of tennis, but even to get, to get my sons to like tennis over a video game um, was a big deal. And so um, I, I am in total agreement with um, uh, uh, naming this, this facility after these two gentlemen. Yes. He, social studies, economics. He did. Yeah, he did it all. He was a great teacher. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I'm with you. Thank you. Uh, Absolutely. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Wolfslayer. Now we have a motion on the table to amend the agenda to add a resolution, and we've had the first and second on this. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Now the next is a. We got. We have one more here. <laughs> now, while well, we have a motion to name the tennis courts for Anthony Gobio and Anthony Delcado. So moved. Any further discussion on this? All in favor? Uh, Aye. Any opposed? Okay, you got it, Dick. <laughs> awesome. And, and I just want to add that I had Anthony uh, Gobio for science actually he taught science for a while so <laughs> he was a tough teacher but a good teacher so thank you very much everyone thank you, thank you. good night Bill Bill I think they maybe the elevator can you see that yeah. we get that going there thank you Hey, now we'll have. <laughs> well, then, then. <laughs> now we'll go on to individual recognitions, announcements, and community reports. Uh, let's start, Mr. Crescenzo. I'm just looking for the, uh, hold on just one second. I want to get this right. Um, num, 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 num. Oh boy, okay, here we are. Tomorrow at 10 o'clock right here in this room, 
there will be the um, the mini music campers um, show. So uh, we'll be here tomorrow, and we'll, it's always a good time. Every I say this all the time. Every function I go to, it's always the best that I've ever seen, and I'm sure tomorrow will be the exact same thing. But other than that, uh, it's just been you know that span in between the meetings. I just haven't had anything. Yeah. But I'm looking forward to that tomorrow. You always Thank make you. An, uh, an attempt to attend many, many events, Mr. Vicenzo. Why don't we start right at the end, Mrs. Blumenau? I actually don't have anything to report. I haven't been too much, um, been in the district very much this uh, past two weeks. Um, but I did want to say one thing that um, Coach Wolf Slayers uh, re referred to, that with the tennis courts that um, we that we built them for our kids, um, and they're an it is an incredible facility, a, a really impressive. Um, but it's it's not just for our kids. Kids from other districts come and play in our courts. Right. Other coaches mm -hmm. come and play. You know, co come to our courts, and then ultimately these are going to be used for state and regional tournaments and championship games. And so the world, you know, comes to Middletown. And I think that the the beauty of um, having nice things is that we can share. Right. And so that's mm -hmm. um, and I, I'm sure that. The two coaches that we've now uh, named our tennis courts after would certainly agree with that: is bringing, bringing uh, the best of us and bringing the world to it. So, thank you. Good. Thank you so much for those comments, uh, Mr. Lassenier. I really don't have anything to report or announce. I would follow what you were planning on announcing later on, obviously, uh, in reference to Val, but. That's pretty much it. Since uh, John, since you're a runner, uh, I try. <laughs> do maybe you would like to say something about the kill coins? I had that on my list, but maybe you would like to. Would you like to do I'll that? I'll let you start with what you have, and I'll follow up if you'd like. Go ahead. I'll follow. I'll follow. Okay. Up. What Mr. Prino is referring to is a uh, particular Valerie Kilcoin and Bill Kilcoin. They're both. Um, very active members of our running community, but they're more than that. They're uh, they're at every event. They're out soliciting donations for events. They're helping in any way they can. Uh, and, and most of the events that they're at, they're they're generating uh, funds that come back into our community with the Classic 10K, the Run for Downtown, the Orange Runners Club Winter Series. Uh, scholarships go out. Uh, all kinds of donations are given back. They're all nonprofits, um, and I can say that. Bill is the muscle when it comes to uh, getting out there and getting the money. And uh, Val, she's kind of the uh, administrative general. Without her, uh, most of these events don't seem to function as efficiently as they uh, they do. So I just would like to uh, reiterate what I believe Mr. Perino is going to say and uh, you know just give them some recognition. Thank you. Thank you. Nice job, Mr. Lawson. Uh, let's go down to the other end of the table with Thank you, Mr. President. What, what, what going to, oh, do you have something to say? Oh, me? Yeah. You, go, you go right ahead. Thank you. I enjoy being vocal. vocal. Yeah. Uh, this past, uh, well, the, the New York State Legislature is currently considering legislation that will make it a felony crime to uh, make threats to schools or school facilities. I think this is of particular interest to our own school district, given that we experienced within the last two-year period uh, scathing incidents that uh, caused so much stress, particularly our students at the Monhagen campus. Um, and uh, the New York State School Board Association is supporting the legislation, and I would definitely encourage our board to look into it and probably even uh, maybe enter a resolution supporting it. I will be looking into getting copies of the actual bills and sharing it with the board members. And another issue that just came up in the last edition of On the Board is uh, on the front page, uh, facial recognition systems in the schools, bold innovation or security theater. Uh, this involves a system where artificial, an artificial intelligence system where a, a, it's a camera system that will be able to recognize anybody carrying a gun and alert authorities as well as 
uh, scan for students who may be suspended, sex offenders, or anyone else who shouldn't be in the school property. The issue or the moral of the story here is uh, whether these systems actually work. I do commend our school district because we've been very efficient and careful in ensuring that we have the best for our students and also programs that are at the same time economical and money's worth. And I think the moral here is that as uh, we focus to ensure that we have the, faces, the safest security software and systems uh, for our school district that we also be mindful that not everything that is out there that shines as gold may be gold that we look, we scrutinize everything. Similarly, in the area of defense, I am a strong believer in a strong defense, but we don't want $6 million toilets also for the defense department. So I, I'm all for uh, improving stranding security, but I guess this article points out, it's good to look at everything and ask all the questions that need to be asked. And, that's, and finally, next week, I believe on August the 2nd, uh, communities throughout Orange County, including the town of Walkill and the city of Middletown, will be having their night out against crime. I know in the city of Middletown is uh, older woman Kate Ramkinson, who's been the dynamic uh, leader of this activity. And uh, it's, uh, there'll, be, uh, there'll be recreational activities for children as well as for the whole community. And there's a fireworks sh show at the end, which the, city, the uh, Middletown Common Council just approved to fund. So I hope everybody enjoys that. We also have, I might add, August 2nd, we have a uh, special meeting at the right. board office, okay? So there's a lot going on. Yes. Uh, Mr. Pierre. I don't have a, a whole lot as usual. Uh, just to congratulate everyone who's, uh, who's introduced here tonight and uh, welcome them to Middletown, those who are new. And those who are from Middletown who came back, uh, thank you for coming back and setting an example. Uh, to our students to let them know that they can come back and they can be successful. And as far as the tennis courts are concerned, I, I think it's only appropriate that uh, we name our facilities after people who uh, impacted this district uh, in a positive way, and, uh, and uh, we appreciate that. And I uh, also want to thank Mr. Wolfslayer for coming here and uh, making that presentation. Uh, we appreciate that. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pierre. Pierre. Well said. Mrs. Tobiason. I really don't have anything to say, but for those people who are listening, I will mention that tonight, today is Mr. Perino's birthday. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. We, we did that. We, <laughs> we did it in private. We did it. We were in four, di were in four different keys. I'm only kidding. Worked out. <laughs> Mrs. Zucks, go right ahead. Um, I want to back up to the all-night grad party because, of course, that is my thing. Um, and I just wanted to say, you know, congratulations to everyone that graduated. I wanted to thank every teacher from kindergarten, from our preschool teachers, to the people who screened the kids to get them into school. This. It takes every single person, the parents, everyone, to get them to graduate. Um, it is a lifelong thing. We wait for our children to graduate. And I really have a thing for graduation. It's something that I think growing up, I've always, I just have this thing. So. What I have to say is, is that we had a low turnout this year for our graduates. And I really would like for us to look and be, and you know, we've also been looking at other school districts. They're having a struggle with their all night grad parties as well. Um, but when you look at where did all night grad parties start from, um, all night grad parties started because it was moms, moms against drunk driving. That was something when I was graduating. Um, I remember I could look out and you can see kids when I was in the audience and then when I was graduating again, you knew that someone might be passing away. You would wake up in the morning and there was not gonna be someone there and that you were gonna go to a funeral. 
we have really beaten something because of our all night graduation, graduation parties. I don't want to go backwards. This is something that we have really done well with. Um, and I really have, I really want to make sure that we figure this out and I'm going to keep on pushing and I hope that together this year we can sit down with our PTO um, and we can figure this out and we can figure out how we can get our kids back and figure out what is, why they're straying away from us. But, you know, this is their celebration and they've worked hard. We've worked hard to get them there. And we always get so upset when one of our kids, something happens to them. I don't want us to be at that point ever. And especially after we work so hard. So to say that, um, I'm so happy that we've gotten our numbers up. I'm happy that we've been in the lead in so many different things. And this is something that I want to lead the way in. I want to lead the way in making sure that we get our numbers back up and we get these kids in here. That's what I have to say. Very good. Thank you. Very worthwhile endeavor. Bishop Williams. Um, I'll be, I'll be, uh, I've got a couple of things, a couple of things real quick. Um, I had the opportunity on last week, uh, I believe it was, it was Thursday, last Thursday to um, be invited and to participate in one of the Middletown Police Department's pop-up barbecues. Um, I believe uh, prior, prior to that, um, uh, Mr. Delmaro, Ms. Mrs. Mrs. Creedon and um, some of the others uh, had the opportunity to go to one. Um, where, where was yours at again? Where did Ours was at the um, park, um, kind of behind our community college in between the park. Um, Bennett Hill. Bennett Hill Park. Anthony, 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 Anthony was there and Anthony Williams was there. And, uh, and we also had the opportunity to go to this one at Tall Oaks. Uh, 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 myself was there, uh, 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 Susan Driscoll, um, I'm, I went blank. Mr. Kelly. Mr. Kelly, yes, Mr. Kelly was there and Mr. Williams were there. And uh, uh, an opportunity to go out and to see what was going on in the community and, um, and to, to watch the, the police department and the fire department um, interact with the community. Uh, we got a chance to get out there and talk with some of the kids and um, encourage some of the kids and some of the families. Um, even out of that, um, some of the families that were in need, um, we were able to kind of uh, reach out and help some of them in need that needed food and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to commend the police department on, um, on, on these type of events um, that, that show us that, uh, that uh, this community can come together and this community is coming together and it's for the betterment of all of us um, so uh, kudos to uh, Chief John Awanchu um, uh, for spearheading um, these type of events. And then uh, uh, on Saturday, this past Saturday, uh, I had the opportunity, uh, uh, our ministry, Faith Alive Ministries, um, in partnership with, partnership with Scholars Hoops, which is the organization um, uh, uh, that, that uh, was founded by Mr. Anthony Williams, our Dean of House Five, as well as Six West Barbershop, uh, which is a new barbershop that is run by, um, by uh, Fred Williams. Uh, we, we sponsored uh, what, what we called a hashtag Williams Strong, because we're all named Williams. Um, hashtag Williams Strong uh, Family Affair and Giveaway. Um, and so uh, that event, uh, in, uh, as, as part of a community partnership, we gave away we gave away sneakers and um, haircuts and uh, um, other items and other things to, uh, to to kids in the community. That day, we gave away uh, 27 pairs of sneakers. Now, they were not they were not cheap sneakers. They were they were not cheap sneakers. If you if you go back and you you go online and you look up some of these sneakers, they were they were very good sneakers. Uh, Dwayne Dwayne Wade sneakers. Uh, and uh, we were able to, to really <coughs> um, uh, touch the lives of some families that were in need. I think it's important for us to understand that uh, 
in a community that is as diverse as, as uh, we have, um, that uh, there are many families who are, are still very much in need, even with all of the things that um, are offered, with all of the things that are out there for, uh, for people to get help. There are still many families that struggle, and uh, the, the looks on the faces of some of the families that came through uh, uh, after, after getting sneakers, especially the mothers, the mothers, the smiles on their faces, and, the, um, and, and just the, the gratitude that they, they had for being able to uh, receive some sneakers and, and, and other things and other items, just it melted my heart. I think that it's important for us as a community to come together and to support uh, each other. You do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And, uh, and so we did this as a partnership in the community, my, the, ministry, the ministry that, um, that I've been blessed to, to lead uh, as well as these other organizations. Um, and we'll be doing more of that uh, in the near future. So I just wanted to talk about that for just a moment, not to bring any kind of light to myself, but just to, to kind of highlight the needs um, of this community and to encourage others to do things like this uh, because I don't think that you ever can go wrong with helping somebody who's in need. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's ever a time that you can, that you can go wrong by, by helping somebody who, who has less. In fact, the only, the only real good reason to, ha to have um, excess and overflow is so that that overflow and that excess can be a blessing to somebody else. And so um, uh, that's, that's pretty much all, all I had. There's other things that are coming up. Uh, the music, MIDI Music Camp, I will be here. I will be here tomorrow uh, to, to, to watch these kids who have worked very hard um, and had a good time doing it uh, over the last two weeks. I want to say that the, music, the MIDI Music Camp is one of the greatest programs that we have that allows our children to come and to, uh, to grow in their love of music, not just their knowledge of music, but their love of music. And, uh, and to, to, to be able to come for free, uh, again, let me say this because I got attached this to it. I don't think anybody understands just how big that is when it comes to families who don't have the funds to send their kids to a summer camp and don't have the funds to send their kids to, to, to even sports camp. Even though sports camp is very affordable, there are still people who cannot afford to go to sports camp. To be able to come to music camp and, again, to increase their knowledge and their love of music and to have, and to have such a fine music staff uh, as the Middletown uh, School District music staff uh, kind of leading him, guide him, I think that is, is an absolute, absolute uh, wonderful thing. So I'll be here tomorrow, uh, be here tomorrow to support them. Uh, that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Bishop Williams. You know, the, I think one of the mantras of the Salvation Army is doing the most good for the most people who have the most need. And I, I, I think we as a district try to do this, and we mm -hmm. try to keep this in mind, whether it's the pre-fuel or the post-fuel program or the supplies, which uh, we're going to talk about next uh, at the next regular meeting. So thank you for doing what you've done. I'm just going to be brief. I'm going up to the mic because I've asked uh, Paul and the crew to put some things on. the uh, Kids Bike Day. Now, uh, Bishop Williams was speaking about an event in the community for the children. Uh, this is most definitely such an event. Uh, it's going to take place this um, coming Saturday at the Circleville Park, and there's going to be a giveaway of bike helmets. Bikes will be checked, and uh, additionally, 
there'll be various guests there, roaming reptiles, a town of Walk Oak volunteer ambulance uh, uh, group, uh, mid-city transit, and so on. So it's a, a very nice day and a very needed day because John Corwin, who coordinates this, uh, he and his staff, they make adjustments to various bicycles, hopefully to keep the uh, students safe. And uh, uh, because a number of them ride bikes not only to school, but in as uh, in, as a recreational program also. Uh, Mr. Crescento is a big bike rider, I know. So Kids Bike Day this Saturday, 28th, 2018, at the Circleville Park. Thank you uh, for putting that on. Um, another uh, recognition uh, this evening uh, let's put the food service up. Uh, the uh, uh, Bishop Williams and I attended a um, an event at the high school in which we uh, saw the food being prepared uh, to be uh, to be delivered to the various uh, various groups. Uh, if you notice, um, so far this year and years by no means over yet this summer, the Food and Nutrition Service served over 30,000, almost 31,000 meals in various locations. We, of course, cooperate with Middletown Parks and Recreation uh, for uh, the delivery to the various buildings. And then there's a sports camp, on and on, the Middletown YMCA, uh, the summer school program. So that's the total. Uh, and I always mention Lauren Burke and Debbie Dunleavy, but the entire staff of the uh, food service, just a wonderful giving staff. They do a, a, a really a remarkable uh, job. Um, I'm going to mention some of their names uh, next week because the hour is getting late and we have a lot to do. Uh, John Lassenaire covered uh, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Kilcoin. And again, just to follow up on that, two very, very dedicated people. Bill is a well-respected member of the uh, buildings and ground staff. And finally, uh, Kevin Gleason, who is our events coordinator. Uh, brought a semi-pro football team, the Hudson Valley Mountaineers, to the uh, to the district, and the the game was good. There were uh, there were three to four hundred people there, I think, uh, last uh, last week, last Saturday. Uh, the crowd was very orderly, uh, thanks to the Middletown Police Department and thanks to our buildings and ground staff. Uh, Bill Kilcoin and Bob Nowicki uh, did a nice job. Everybody seemed to have a good time. And I want to compliment Lindsey Hammer. The game was on a Sunday, I'm sorry. Lindsey Hammer and members of the track team who gave a part of their Sunday to work the Linda A. Knapp concession stand. So that's good. And I thought I was done, but the one other thing. The programs at Thrall Library are tremendous this summer. I've been down there a, a few times and, and talked to the Director of Youth Services, Bridget Manio, uh, one after another of uh, programs. R plenty of reading material. Please, it's not too late to get on a reading program for the summer. So. Um, Consider doing this, and if you have any questions, give Thrall Library a call, the Youth Services uh, Division of the, of the library. So that's all I have, and thank you for putting those on the screen, Paul.
Mrs. Clark, no letters this evening. Okay. Okay. Opportunity to address the board. Anyone in the audience? Any of our tech people? We're going to, we are number eight now, opportunity to address the board. Well, we're, we're going along here. And there are no letters this evening, correct? All right. Okay, approval of financial memorandum number three, motion to approve financial memorandum number three as presented. Need a motion? Do we have a second on that? Did we yes. get that? Any discussion? Again, we've had this uh, for about a week now. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Approval of special service memorandum number two. Motion to approve special service memorandum number two as presented. So moved. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Number C, motion to approve professional development plan. So moved. Second. Second. Uh, uh, may I ask, uh, Ms. Creeding, could you just give a very quick overview for the public of what that is? Sure, Mr. Prino. The um, professional development plan is required to us to submit annually, and it um, contains goals and objectives for the district and outlines the ways that the district will meet those goals and objectives by providing professional development opportunities to both um, you know, the, the uh, staff um, in direct instruction with students and the support staff. Okay. Thank you very much. Any further discussion on this? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. And then again, we had this professional development plan in our uh, board docs. Mm -hmm. Approval of annual appointments. Motion to approve annual appointments as presented. So moved. Any discussion? <coughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Motion. Uh, Approval of the memorandum of, of uh, agreement with the MTA athletic trainer. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? We this was discussed last uh, at the last meeting. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Approval of the memorandum of agreement with Mecca. It resolved that the board ratify the collective bargain, bargaining agreement negotiated between the district and the Middletown Educational Clerical Association covering the period July 1st, 2017 through June 30th, 2022, as set forth in the party's memorandum of agreement dated July 9th, 2018. So moved. Any discussion on this? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. And I'm glad I'm glad this is settled. Uh, very difficult to run a district impossible without the contributions of uh, the members of the clerical association. I've said this on a number of occasions. They've broken in a lot of administrators, believe me. Next action item. Motion to approve memorandum of agreement with the CSEA. Resolve that the board ratifies the collective bargaining agreement negotiated between the district and the Civil Service Employees Association covering the period July 1st, 2017 through June 30th, 2022 as set forth in the party's memorandum of agreement dated June 20th, 2018. Second. Any discussion? And I'd just like to say that 
this group, I call them our first responders. When there's snow and ice, they're there. Uh, when uh, programs are held at the field or, or in the schools, they're there. So a, a very dedicated group. Yeah. So all in favor of this? Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. And there's evidence of this. Just look at this building, how nice our custodial staff keeps the, uh, this building. What a fine job they do. Second opportunity to address the board. <laughs> Any takers? No takers on this. Anybody on the tech team? No? <laughs> okay. Committee reports. Any committee reports this evening? John, I just have a question, and I don't know if it needs to be directed to the funding committee or um, if it's Amy and that. I wonder if we could have some kind of update. Um, I was reading about the legislation that went through. I think it's for the 2018-2019 school year, um, and it had to do with the requirements for uh, you had to have at least four elementary schools to ensure is it 50 percent of the state aid would be refunded to the districts? No? All right. It was called the New York State School Funding. And there was, a, I believe, a NISBA article that came out about it asking if we had any questions. And I was just wondering, uh, I wanted some clarification on it. It said requirement with they had to have, you had to have at least four schools and you re would receive a minimum of 50% of its total revenue for state aid. So I was wondering, it sounded like it was actual legislation. Four elementary you had to have at least four elementary schools in your district for this. It was one of the NISBA articles that came across. Oh, four schools. I'm sorry, did I say elementary? I apologize. Yeah. All right, I'll try to get the article then, but I was just curious, especially as budget season will be coming before we know it, how this might affect us and help us um, with the fair funding. It was labeled fair funding, so. Could, could you uh, check on that, uh, Mike, and report on it at the next uh, regular board meeting? Any other committee reports? On that note, the next fair funding committee meeting will be in mid-September. I'll be providing the okay. Thank you for and thank you for the job you've done on that this year, Mr. Gomez. And, uh, a lot of credit goes to uh, the members of the committee, uh, Linda Hansen, uh, Francis uh, Glickman, and of course my colleague and our standing board member Keisha Zucks. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Sucks, for your participation in that. Any other committee reports? Our, we will be we will be having a policy committee enacted. Um, those of you who were on the email to um, the Terrence sent out on my behalf to please get back to me because we have a lot of policies to go through. Um, I've done this before, and I know that we're going to be. Um, spending some time together, so just be prepared to um, to try to kind of power through some. We'll spread them out, but there are uh, there there are considerable amount to review. Thank you. Are we having a meeting on Tuesday or of next week or not? Tuesday. I, I'm fine with Monday or Tuesday, and that was my email. I didn't hear from everybody. So did I, you? I responded and said Monday would be out because yeah. that's. So I don't so know about anybody else who's on who, the committee. Who else is, was sent Tuesday? Uh, I haven't checked the email out. We usually, what we do is we usually, what we've done before is we spend about an hour going as much, you know, doing as much as we can at a time and uh, reviewing it. You'll get a binder. Taryn's going to be putting together a binder of all the policies that need to be reviewed. It doesn't mean you have to read everything in the binder. There are specific It'll give you directions, but we'll go through that in the first meeting. 
So, it, but Taryn has a lot to put together. So if we can make it on Tuesday, please, if we can all be there on Tuesday, who else beside me and? I answered that, I, I won't be around Tuesday. Right, you won't I'll be I'll be going away on Tuesday. vacation as of Monday, so. Vince, Tuesday. No, you're on the, the committee. Is, uh, uh, Mrs. Uh, Blumenau is chair of the committee. Uh, Mr. Crescenzo is on the committee. Uh, Mr. Gomez is on the committee. Mrs. Tobiasen is on the committee. Okay. This is a policy committee. And I'm an alternate if somebody doesn't make it, can't make it. So we don't Tuesday have five. Tuesday at <coughs> five, but we need a location. So we can be at the board office if there's a room. Okay, so we'll send out, we'll, I'll be in touch with everyone or Karen will be in touch. If we have our old policy book, does she need to, is there a way that she could just give us or give those who were on the, the committee before just the updates with that. I mean, that, that's a book like about yay big. I'm trying to save a little work that, and some, some paper. But that policy book was an old policy book, so we're gonna get it. That's the one that we previously updated yes. well, with yes, uh, Mr. Estrada and uh, yeah. Daryl. Yes, but that policy book had all of the prospective changes in it, so we, we, the new policy book will have all of the updated that we approved, and then we'll have the new changes. So we do need new policy books, unfortunately. I am. I agree with you. I would much rather yeah. do it digitally. If there's a way that we can do that, I would like to be able to save the district some money on, you know, that amount of printing. But so if we can, we can use Google. Maps. I don't need another book. I got the book. Know, you can give me the inserts. I don't need another okay. binder. Okay, that would be great. So the meeting is Tuesday at five at the board office. Okay. Anything, any more committee reports? Mrs. Clark keeps me busy, myself and Mrs. Ux with the IEPs, so we're doing that. Somebody should keep you busy. <laughs> any, and by the way, before we go on the board comments, I want to thank everybody for the cake for my birthday. It was very nice. And any, Thing new and compelling for roundtable. No motion to adjourn. Okay, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And before we go, motion carries. We have a special meeting, five o'clock August second, at the board office. Oh. Our board retreat is. Uh, 816, place to be determined. And a, a regular meeting is on the 30th of August. 816. At which time on the 30th of August, we have a new tech team. I'm going to ask everyone on the tech team to introduce themselves at the mic. Mm -hmm. Because you deserve a lot of credit for what you do, believe me. Motion carried, we're in adjournment. John, I, John, John, I will not be here August 30th. It's my son's Five o'clock. Well, we, we, I have to see Richard about that because the place originally selected doesn't have refrigeration for, doesn't have it for meals and so on. John, I will not be here.